Welcome back everyone. In the last video we changed our form to actually use some of the tools Angular 2 provides us with and to be able to easily validate it and pass it to our contact list. Now in this video we'll have a look at a different approach of creating such a form uh, using the form builder. Let's dive into this. So what we did in the last video is we just created a form in our template and Angular 2 automatically detected that form and made it a form in the, in the background, so to say. So created a control group out of it and attached the ng form directed to this form invisibly, so to say. That is why we were able to reference it even though we never added it explicitly. Then we added controls to that form to tell Angular, well, this input here should be something which is part of this form, as is this, by using the ng-control directive and binding it to, to a name here. We then used two-way data binding to automatically write all our changes into this model, or in this, in this um, object here, which would then be insert it as a new contact once we click submit. That was the approach in the last video and the key takeaway is the form we created was all created here in the template. Uh, it was automatically detected and we're only specifying which controls are part of this form. But we didn't create it programmatically. Now with form builder we will create it programmatically. Now, why would we want to do this? Well, this gives us a little bit more configuration possibilities. For one thing, we could create totally hidden inputs where, where we not even have a hidden input field here because we can add any control to our form programmatically we want even though we have no visual representation. Remember, here we're adding controls with ng-control, therefore we can only add what we have in our DOM. When it comes to validation with the form builder, we can quickly add different validation logic, so to say, to our controls. And um, that is a bit easier and more flexible than using this template driven approach here. So how do we create a form with form builder? First is the form will be an, a property of our component. So I'll create this uh, property here and I'll just call this my form which will be of type control group. Remember that the form, the ng form, is an object of type control group. So our form we create here will obviously be one of control group two. Now, please make sure you're always importing all the things you need. I, I know I don't mention every, every, every single class I'm importing here. And this has the single reason that my, my IDE is automatically doing that for me and oftentimes I don't even think about mentioning it. But you should make sure you do this and when it comes to this form related stuff you'll find everything you need in the angular2 slash common package here or module. Opposed to the slash core or the slash router packages we were using before. So now we created our or we, we set up our my form property, we haven't created anything actually. The next thing we will need is our form builder, which is a service we will inject into our class. And we do so by, well, just adding another private property here, the form builder, which is of type form builder. This again is added to my imports here. And Angular 2 is automatically able to, to resolve this injection without me adding any new providers here. That is important to know this, as in the last video, we don't have to add any directives or providers here. This is automatically possible by Angular 2, so to say. Just like we can use ng-if and ng-4 without having to add any um, directives here, even though they are directives, if you think about it. So that is um, the way we add our form builder. Now for actually building our form, I'll go down here to the ng-on-init um, function and I'll get rid of the code we currently have there. And then I want to take my form and set it to 
Well, the form we build with the form builder. We do this with the group function. And this method takes a JavaScript object where we describe the, yeah, well, the, the object we're binding our form to, so to say. So the, the input fields it will have, or the controls in general it will have, and the structure of our form. Of our form. Now, um, in this case, we will have exactly this structure here. We're binding to this model because, well, we have these four inputs here. Therefore, I'll have the first property or the first control, which I create with quotation marks and then a the name. And the name should, in this case, equal the one of our um, contact. So it should be first name, camel case, because um, this will make it easier for us to actually create a contact out of this form. So the first name will have a value of an array. And I will come back to this array in a second. Uh, next, I will create this last name, oops, name, also with an array. And then I'll have my phone array and my, my email, also an array. Inside this array, the first element will be the default value of this input. So for my first name, it will be empty, um, but I could set any value that I want. And as I said, um, this is only created programmatically here. So let, now that I'm in it, let me get rid of this and all of that stuff here. And I'll get rid of, of that here and that and that. So now we have no visual representation of our form because, well, um, I have no way of, or Angular 2 has no way of telling which of my properties here should relate to which input here. We will do something about this in a second, but as of now be aware, all of these would be invisible, so to say, because we have no representation in the DOM. So we could set a default value here and pass it as an invisible value, so to say, if we never add a representation. I'll let this empty, and in a second argument, I can specify some, some validators. And I will, uh, or I can generally specify additional configuration, and I will add validation here by using the validators um, class here, and then just taking the required um, field. Again, this was automatically added here. And now I'll just copy all of that into each of these arrays except for the last name, where I will set the default value because we can get it from our route. And this will be route params, get last name. And if no last name is passed, this will automatically be empty. So now the whole form is set. And now what I wanna do is get rid of this because at the moment this won't work. And what I can then do save this and now we submit our form still with unsubmit here but what we now do is we no longer longer need our new contact we can simply insert this my form value because the value of, of this my form object here of the control group will be just a javascript object as we define it here with these fields and that is why it's good that this is exactly the same as our contact because now we can just take this object and insert it into our context because it has exactly the same structure. It's exactly the same. So let me save this. Now create a new contact and as you can see you don't see any last name because as I said Angular, way has, Angular 2 has no way of telling which input should relate to which um, control here. But if I click create contact, you see that it was added here. The same with black. So it somehow seems to work even though we don't see it. And that is because the form exists, we created it here. The submit does work, we can submit this form value because we got a default value here, the rest is empty. It's required, yes, but we we'll never check if that should stop something. So this form now works, but we can't edit it, which is not the coolest way for forms. So let's add a way to, to edit this form. 
As I said, we create this form programmatically. Therefore, if on submit is executed, we can pass it. Though this template here has almost nothing to do with it. The only thing that works here at the moment is this, this button here and this ng submit. And then, well, this function happens to just take this my form here and it works. Now, but we want to fill this form with a little bit of life here. Now, as I said in the last video, it was the, the ng form was automatically attached. So the form was automatically created and we created controls by adding ng control here. In this case, we already created everything. So we don't want Angular 2 to attach anything to this form and we don't want to create anything in our template here. We just want to bind this template to our programmatically created form. We do so by using the ng form model directive with squared brackets, which always signalizes us something is flowing into this template, into this element, data is flowing into it because we're binding it to something and we're binding it to the my form property here. Now this form is actually um, this form and then we can show this by adding an argument to on submit of my form dot value. And now if I take this argument here and then just pass value here, save it. We still don't see anything here because still Angular 2 has no way of knowing which input should relate to which control here. But we still add this contact, even though we're now not directly accessing our my form, but we're getting the value from our form where we are again, just taking the, the value of this property here. And now this form here is bound to this property. So that's just another way, but now let's add these inputs to our controls. Just as we bound the form to this my form property, we now bind our controls. We no longer create them here. We bind our inputs to the ng form control directive. With this directive, we bind them to their respective controls in our form object here. We do this by just accessing my form controls, which is then an array of all control controls in this form, where we then access the control we want to bind it to by its name. So the name specified here. Now let me just copy this ng form control here. Oops. And add it here. Now here we'll have the last name. Here we have the phone and the email. Save this. And now if we click here, create new contact. Now you can see that the data we were passing all the time is now actually visible here. And this is red because now we know it's not valid because now it is bound to a control which has a validator. Now, if we want to, for example, again, disable this button when the form is not valid, we would do this by still adding the disable directive here, binding it to simply my form dot valid or not valid to be precise. Save this. And now you can see this is grayed out. Not working. If we want to add this not valid text right after our invalid input field, I'll again add just a span not valid. Now I could either do ng if equals, then just copy this here, valid. And again, exclamation mark because it should be not valid. This would work, as you can see. Another way, shorter probably, would be to again add a local variable, first name, and bind it to again ng form. Because we still have an ng form object here, we just created it ourselves. That's the difference. Now we can access this first name local variable here. As you can see, it still works. So we're still able to, to set the reference to our controls, our control groups, and that hasn't changed. What has changed is that we now completely create our form here, and then we're just binding things in our template to that form. And that is the key, the key part to take away here. 
that in the last video we had it created for us or we created it in our template by adding ng control without squared brackets which always well squared brackets always in this case signal us that we're just binding it to something we're not creating anything here and in this video well we're creating it programmatically and only binding our template to us as i said this gives us a little bit of additional configuration possibilities and mm, I, I really like it a bit more but obviously it's up to you which method to choose it will depend on what you're using it for the other works just as fine and is <laughs> just one as i said of the tools angular 2 offers you and it's up to you which tool to use obviously so that's the basic stuff about forms we also have things like custom validators um, like maybe subscribing to change events in our forms and so on. We, we also haven't talked about what happens if I enter parts of this form and then hit the back button. Maybe there should be some kind of warning. Do I really want to go back or do I want to stay on this page? So that are things we will have a look at in the next videos too because obviously they are also key of great applications but Mainly this is about the basics and now we covered really well the basics of forms with these two methods we have here and we will have a look at different other basic things in the next video. So see you there. Bye.